Good morning, it's time for art. So you're going to need a few art supplies this morning. And one of the art supplies you're going to need is aluminum foil. Any kind of aluminum foil you have at home, just get out a sheet about this big. All right, you're going to need a pencil, maybe a marker or a crown would probably work. A piece of paper, just a regular sheet of white paper will work. And if you want, these are optional, you could have uh, a stapler, you could have a piece of tape. And you could also get out a piece of hard paper, maybe a piece of cardboard, something like this to have your sculpture stand up on. And you also need a pair of scissors. Now what we're doing today is we're making an aluminum foil sculpture. And when we talk about sculptures in art, we're talking about a form. A form is something that's three-dimensional. It's not going to be flat like we did last week with our painting. It's going to be fat, something you could put your hands around. All right? So what we're using today is aluminum foil to make our sculpture. Some artists might use clay. They might carve their sculpture out of wood. Uh, they might use plastic or metal. Have you ever heard of an ice sculpture where they carve a sculpture out of ice? Now, when we used watercolors last week, that was a different medium. That was a different tool that the artist used, and it doesn't look the same as what we're going to do today. All right? So we're going to use aluminum foil, and you can kind of bend and twist and squish this medium into a sculpture or into a form. And there's lots of different things you can make with aluminum foil. We're going to make a figure today in action, but you could make animals with aluminum foil. You can make anything you want, all right? So when we talk about sculptures in art, we're talking about artwork that's three-dimensional. It takes up space. It has a height. It has a width, and then it has a depth, how deep it goes, how wide it is, okay? Uh, something like a shape is flat and two-dimensional. So when we created artworks with paintings and drawings, they're flat and two-dimensional, and a sculpture is three-dimensional. All right, and we're going to look at a very famous French artist today. His name is Edgar Degas, and he created lots of different artworks that showed people in motion. He liked to uh, paint and draw ballerinas, but he also made sculptures of ballerinas and showed the movement. So today, we're going to create this movement of the figure in a sculpture, all right? Don't you like these different ballerinas? You can almost see the movement in their forms, all right? And the way we're going to create this movement is we're going to draw something very quick, a quick sketch called a gesture drawing. And this is going to help us to make our sculptures today. And I brought a very nice friend with me today, Renee Phillips. She's going to come and do some different poses for us to get these gesture drawings. But if your family or your brother or sister wants to do a pose for you so you can capture this gesture drawing, that would be great. All right, so sometimes an artist We'll use um, a line drawing for a gesture. Um, like if you know how to draw stick people, that's fine. Um, sometimes the artist will use a quick scribble for their gesture. So take your paper and fold it in half two times because we're going to make four gesture drawings. So fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And then we're going to practice four different poses. And then you'll have some options when you make your sculpture. All right, now I drew my paper really big on the board so you can see these gesture drawings. And I'm going to ask Miss Renee Phillips if she'll pick out a pose for us so that we can get a good gesture, something with a lot of movement where you move your arms and your legs, and then we'll, we'll draw four different gesture drawings today. All right, so what will be the first one? The Heisman. The Heisman. Okay, so in this pose, we got her head. I'm just going to draw a scribble. And we see her arm is stretched out, and then her hand's up. Now her body is kind of coming straight down, and she has her little arm kind of tucked in here. Oh, I like the way her legs are bent. That's going to be good for our sculpture today. And then her back leg is going straight out, and then her foot's coming down. So this Heisman uh, little pose is a good one for our sculpture because you have a lot of movement with your legs and your arms. That's great, Miss Phillips. Let's do another one. We got another space right here. Ballerina? Ballerina! I love a dancer. So let's try a dancing pose. Oh, this one's nice. There's her head. It's straight up. 
and then she has her arms curved up on the top that's going above her head. And I'm just doing a scribble, but you could do lines. And then here's her body, and then she has one knee coming out and in, and then one leg kind of going straight down, and her little foot is kind of poked out. All right, so now we're kind of capturing this movement of a dancer. All right, great. Let's try another pose. How about the Wonder Woman pose? This is great. So I like this pose. We got our arms are kind of out and in for the elbows. Here's the body. Oh, and the legs are going to be spread out, guys. Let's draw the legs kind of straight out. And then her little feet right here. This is a good pose. A lot of movement in the arms, a lot of uh, space. This is called negative space right here between the legs. That'll look good on your sculpture today, too. All right, the one last movement, she'll do a dance pose for us. Let's do the dab. All right, let's do the dab. Oh, my goodness. All right, so her head is kind of bent down this time. And then she has her arms kind of up and down. And then this arm's going straight down. All right, and then here's her body. Oh, I like the way one knee is kind of bent. And the other one's going straight back like this. All right, so it's good to have some different gesture drawings today, some different poses, some dance, some sports poses. Uh, superhero poses are great. You could get somebody in your family to pose like a superhero. That'd be wonderful. All right, now it's time to make our sculpture. So I'm going to take my aluminum foil, and I'm going to get it ready to create a person or a figure. Now, if you want to do it different than I'm doing today, you can, because aluminum foil is very soft. You can crunch it up the way you want to. I'm just going to show you one way to do it, okay? And this way, what we're going to do is we're going to draw two vertical lines at the top. And this is going to give us a space for the head and a space for the arm on both sides. In the middle, we're going to put the body or the torso. And we're going to do two horizontal lines on the sides to help us give us room for our legs down at the bottom. Now, for the legs, we're only drawing one horizontal line, uh, vertical line on the bottom, okay? So here we go. Let's draw. I'm going to use a marker. I've used crayons for this. I've used other markers. So anything will probably work. So I'm going to draw two vertical lines at the top, just like this. And I'm going to write arm, head, arm. So I can remember this is the top. And then I'm going to draw two horizontal lines kind of right in the middle. Right here in the middle, two horizontal lines. They're not going very far into the middle because I need to leave some room for the body or the torso. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to draw one vertical line just like this. And then this will be leg and then leg. And this is the body. All right, now we're ready to start our sculpture. So I'm going to get out my scissors, and I'm going to carefully cut on these lines that I drew. So I'm going to cut these two lines at the top. And you don't have to be exact. And then the two lines in the middle, the two horizontal lines, right here and right here. Okay, and then we have one line left at the bottom for the legs. Let's just cut that one line in the middle. All right, now this part we're going to be kind of careful because we're going to start crumpling up our aluminum foil. And we don't want to squish it too hard and too fast. It might tear. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of gently fold and bend this paper, this aluminum foil, until I get kind of a rounded shape at the top for the head. And it doesn't have to be perfect yet. I'm just trying to get the parts ready to, to sculpt. Now, this part right here, I want to keep it long for the arms because we have some wonderful movement up here. I don't want very short arms. So I'm going to gently fold and bend this paper so I can have a nice long arm right here. And I'm not squishing it all the way just yet. Let's just get it mostly into that shape. And then for the other arm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to gently fold and squish the paper until I get an arm shape. And we're going to refine that in a few minutes. 
Now, the legs, we're gonna do the same thing. We kinda want these long legs, so I'm not crumpling them up too hard. See how gentle you could do this? And then the other leg, very gentle. Keep it, try to keep it kinda long. All right, now that I got the basic parts of my sculpture, now I'm gonna start to refine it. I'm gonna just start to get this little head shape, maybe squeeze it in a little more at the neck. All right, start to get my arms and my shoulders shaped and my little hands. If it's a little too long, you can kinda push it back in towards the body a little bit. All right, now here's my body and here's my legs. All right, great, you guys are doing a good job. Well, now we have something like that looks like a little sculpture already. Now, we're gonna decide on which one of these sculptures we like for our little figure right here. And I think I'm gonna pick this Wonder Woman pose. I've never done that sculpture before. So before I get going with my pose, I'm gonna take my little paper that um, is kind of a stiff cardstock paper and I'm going to draw this gesture drawing on here, and it's gonna look kind of like a cast shadow on the ground, a shadow, all right? So let's take our paper, and this time, when I draw this, I'm gonna kind of draw it like a stick figure, and then I'm gonna add some meat to the bones, okay? So I'm gonna start with an oval and color it in black. If you have a black crayon or a pencil, you could just color it in darkly with your pencil. All right, and then I'm gonna draw the torso or the body and I'm gonna color that in black. All right, and then you see the arms are coming out and the elbows are bent back to the waist. And I'm gonna give it a little more, a little more form. So if you draw a line, Go back over your line with a little oval to make it a little thicker lines. All right, now let's do the legs. Look at how the legs are going straight out. And let's give them a little more meat on the bones. And then here's the foot. And then this leg is going straight out. And here's the little foot. All right, and color all those parts in black because this is a shadow. All right, now we have our paper, and I'm gonna make my uh, sculpture pose, okay? And so I'm gonna bend the little elbow in to the waist, and the other little elbow in to the waist. And the legs are pretty much already done. They're kind of spread out a little bit. Maybe make the bottom part of the legs a little smaller. All right. Now that you're done with your sculpture, we're gonna add it to our card. You can tape it down. You can, um, I'm gonna use a stapler, but however you can do it, you can tape it or staple it. So let's just staple the little feet onto the cast shadow. And then your sculpture can stand up, just like this. All right, now, what if you wanna add something to it? Maybe you wanna take another piece of aluminum foil if you were making somebody shoot a hoop, like a basketball hoop. You could take a little piece of aluminum foil and make your accessories for your sculpture. Maybe make a little basketball shape like this. And if the person, if the sculpture was shooting a basketball, I can just add that on to my sculpture like that. Or if you had a dancer and you wanted to add a little tutu to it, you could take a little piece of aluminum foil <clears throat> and maybe crumple it up, twist it however you want to make like a little a dress or skirt on your sculpture. And just keep working on that and pinching it until you get the shape that you like. So you can add to this, okay? You can, um, you can make a little musical instrument. Maybe your sculpture is playing a guitar. And oh, he's playing air guitar up here, so maybe he has a sculpture like that. All right, now, after you have finished your sculpture and you drew your cast shadow, maybe take a picture of your sculpture or your gesture drawings and send them to me. My email address is rwright at mcpss.com. 
Maybe you could put your sculpture in the window or uh, put it up on your dresser at home. Display your artwork so we can all see it. All right, now next week for art, we're gonna make something called a still life. This is gonna be a lot of fun. You are gonna need glue and scissors next week. You're gonna need one and a half sheets of paper for this project and some kind of colored paper or white tissue. You can use colored tissue. Um, you can use any kind of crayons or markers that you have. Um, I like to use crepe paper. If you don't have tissue paper, but you have those little streamers, you can use that for our still life next week. So our still life is going to be two-dimensional, but it's going to have one little part on it, like the tissue, that's three-dimensional. Okay, so I can't wait to see you next week when we make our still life.